welcome students to the topic shuttle vectors uh, vectors we had discussed uh, uh, in the former videos uh, this particular topic shuttle vector uh, is slightly different from the normal vectors that we discussed so far how let's see see the name itself suggests what it is shuttle you understand what is a shuttle you you shuttle this cock from one person to the other person in a game called badminton so we are here talking about shuttling vector the cloning vector we can shuttle it between two different organisms that is normally till now what we were talking about vectors we were using a vector uh, which was artificially designed to be delivering a gene in only one particular cell type but here shuttle vectors can be used to deliver gene of interest and make make the uh, gene of interest propagate in two different organisms so we are going to talk about a shuttle vector yep13 each episomal plasmid that is a full form of y e n p now this shuttle vector what we are going to talk about here can be used as a cloning vector in e coli that is a prokaryote as well as in a eukaryote that is a yeast cell we are taking here a yeast cell so the example of shuttle vector y p 13 we will discuss here so what is it it is also an artificially designed vector but with certain features more than what normal cloning vectors have it is a self replicating molecule and can be used as a vehicle to carry gene of interest and make it propagate in two different kinds of cells it can be in prokaryotic cell like a bacteria as well as the same vector can be used in a eukaryotic cell okay now one word here episome i will just brief it here we have talked about plasmid in my former videos uh, so episome it is also a, um, an extra chromosomal material like a plasmid but some additional ability it has more than plasmid what it is it can replicate in association with the main chromosome of the organism plasmids do not uh, depend on the main chromosome at all that is one main difference here so here it can replicate also if needed in association with the main chromosome which with which it gets integrated but at some point it can dissociate from it and even self replicate just like a plasmid that is the main difference between an episome and a plasmid now how are shuttle vectors different i already said in brief let us see this with a detail explanation normally when we talk about any cloning vector i have not specified any name here any cloning vector you have discussed pbr322 you have discussed puc19 so any cloning vector it carries a gene of interest in a specific host that host may be a bacteria or it may be a uh, it may be a yeast cell or some other cell but only one at a time that particular vector artificially designed can be used only in one cell you can deliver gene of interest using it in e coli then you cannot use it for any other organism you can use it for yeast cell you will not use it for any other organism you can use it for mammalian cell plant cell whatever but that will be specifically for that cell shuttle vectors are redesigned with some extra elements they have sequences are, um, which are something more than the cloning vectors have what are they we will discuss and those features because of those features it can express the gene it carries in two different hosts see here is a picture of a shuttle vector and this same shuttle vector it is designed in such a way that it can be used for bacterial cell and it can be used for a yeast cell there may be more shuttle vectors which may be used in bacterial cell one particular species of bacteria and another species of a bacteria so it can be shuttled between the two it can be there can be shuttle vectors designed to be used for bacterial cell and the same shuttle vector can be used for mammalian cell 
to deliver and propagate gene of interest. So that is it. Between prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell, like the bacteria and yeast, two different species of bacteria, species A, species B, whichever, and between bacteria, E. coli, and mammalian cell. So any way a shuttle vector can be used, it can be designed in such a way that it can be used in RDNA technology between two different hosts. Now, what are those extra elements? What are those features introduced in shuttle vectors to be efficiently used in two different hosts? See the picture here. It's just like uh, engineered, genetically engineered any other vector. But take care of this thing. See, you see an origin of replication, origin and replication genes for bacteria. This is the ORI area. That means when this shuttle vector is carrying a gene of interest, Definitely it will be in the cloning site uh, and it is delivered into, it is introduced into a competent cell that is a bacteria. This is the place where it will begin its replication. Whereas when the same shuttle vector is used with a, a gene of interest into an yeast cell, this is the ORI region which starts initiation of replication in the yeast. So what does it mean? The origin of replication in shuttle vectors are two. One will take care of initiating in bacterial cell, the other ORI region for yeast cell. So normally a cloning vector has one ORI, shuttle vectors have two. Same way selectable markers, these also are two here because when it is introduced into bacterial cell, uh, a particular selectable marker that we have discussed in PBR, antibiotic resistance gene will work. Okay, it will act as a selectable marker. You know what are selectable markers we have discussed. They are sequences of genes which expresses certain protein, certain product. And because of that product, we can differentiate between a recombinant and a non-recombinant. We can see which cell has taken your gene of interest. So that is why a selectable marker is used. So in bacterial cell, this will act as a selectable marker. Whereas in, in yeast cell, LEU, that is a marker, LEU, leucine biosynthesis gene that will act as a selectable marker in yeast. This we will take in detail now because ampicillin we have already discussed earlier. Then multiple cloning site in shuttle vector is the same for both bacteria and for yeast. Okay, it will remain same. Wherever you are delivering, you can insert gene of interest in this area, whether you are, in, in, whether you are using this vector for bacteria or for yeast. So I hope that much is clear. Now see, I will talk about LU2 in detail. Um, this is the area where a gene is introduced, suppose. This is the ampicillin resistance gene. I'll just short, in short brief this first. So suppose this vector with a gene of interest is introduced into a bacterial cell. So from the origin of replication, this will start replicating. And what will happen? This bacterial cell, a normal E. coli cell, which is not having ampicillin resistance gene, that is why AMPS is written sensitive. It, is, it will die in ampicillin media. So when you introduce this vector, it gets transformed. You can see this vector, this plasmid is there. Okay. So it is transformed now. That means it is having resistance to ampicillin. So such a transformed ampicillin cell, uh, sorry, such a transformed bacterial cell with ampicillin resistant gene, when cultured in a nutrient media, having the antibiotic ampicillin, this will not die. That shows that this bacterial cell colonies which will not die have taken your, this vector with the insert, with the gene of interest. Whereas if colonies die away, you can very well make it clear that they are the non-transformants. So which one you will pick up? The colonies which are living. You will pick up because your gene of interest is there because that plasmid has the ampicillin resistance gene, so it is surviving. Similarly, if you are using the uh, um, vector to deliver a gene of interest in yeast cell, LEU2 acts as a selectable marker. So what happens? A normal yeast cell is made mutant. Its LEU2 gene is first inactivated. So you use such a mutant yeast cell whose LEU2 is not there. Now you are introducing this vector having a leucine. Leucine is an, this is an amino acid. 
leucine. So this when introduced into the yeast cell, this yeast cell gets transformed. Okay, origin of replication will initiate the replication and the cells will have more and more of this vector. When it forms new uh, colonies, new generation, they will have the LU2 gene. So in a medium, if you don't give leucine, leucine is a very important amino acid needed for the growth of yeast cells. So if you don't put leucine here, still the yeast cell will live because it has gene for biosynthesis of leucine. It can make its own leucine and can live. Whereas the cells will, which die, they are the non-transformant because leucine nahi hai. Leucine is not there in the nutrient media, they will die because they don't have the gene making leucine. How leucine biosynthesis takes place that we will discuss. See what is the role of the leucine gene. It codes for an enzyme propyl malate dehydrogenase. What is the role of this enzyme? It is needed for biosynthesis of amino acid leucine. Biosynthesis cell within the cell synthesis of amino acid from pyruvic acid. It is growing in a media containing glucose, sucrose, whatever. So, you know carbohydrate metabolism, the first product is uh, pyruvic acid during glycolysis. So, pyruvic acid in presence of this enzyme gets converted to leucine. So, leucine is available because the gene is there in the cell. If the gene is not there, leucine won't be formed. Then you have to give leucine in the media. That is the logic. So, yeast cells when introduced with YP vector, because YP vector has a LU2 gene, the cell, the bacterial cells, even if grown in medium lacking leucine will grow. Cultured in medium lacking leucine will grow. And these which grow you have to pick up. They are the recombinants. They have the gene of interest. Because gene of interest in, is delivered in the vector having LU2 gene. Whereas E cells which have not taken that redesigned vector that is a shuttle vector will not survive because Without leucine, you have not given medium uh, with leucine. So it will not, those which die are the non recombinant. Clear yeah, that uh, doesn't have your insert. Now, why are cloning, uh, Why? what is the main uh, goal of cloning experiments? One, to make many copies of the desirable gene. That is called repli, that is through replication. So there we use cloning vectors, normal cloning vectors. There are also some other vectors which you need to learn in brief. That is the expression vector. So, uh, expression vectors are those vectors which are suitable for expressing product, a protein product in the given host. They are called expression vectors. Here we are not using for cloning the gene, multiplying the gene, but for expressing a particular protein you need. For example, insulin production when you use a vector for insulin production or for any protein production, you use expression vectors. So what are expression vectors? Definition you should learn. They are used to carry the gene for expressing a particular protein uh, that, and for that they should have additional features. Normally a vector has ORI, uh, origin of replication, selectable marker and multiple cloning sites. Expression vectors have some extra sequences. They should have areas for binding to the ribosome site. See in this picture, this is the uh, expression vector. Uh, when delivering a piece of gene, that gene should have ability to bind to ribosome. So such sequences should be there. And this is the ribosome, uh, which is the protein synthesizing machinery. So proteins are formed. So this is how it goes. Expression vector, extra features you can learn here. Okay. So I hope the topic is clear. This is not too much in detail. So I am briefing it with some extra uh, sequences present in expression vector. That is it. Okay. If you like, if you understood, please share, like and definitely subscribe. Thank you so much.